I sort of graduated. Oh, got it. Um, I graduated uh, with a degree in environmental science uh, while doing acting on the side. Um, acting was something I always wanted to do, but my mum was like, you're really good at school. Please go get a degree. So I did that and then immediately started acting. So I was very fortunate, um, but I did I didn't go the conventional route into acting as far as training. I was very lucky and I, I had a really lovely career and then um and Suzanne who I work for used to call me in a lot um but I kind of reached a point where I was sort of more interested in what was going on behind the scenes and so I started session running for um commercial casting director Sasha Robertson who uh, of course does many other uh, productions as well um and I was just running sessions for her and then um her associate who now works at Kate Dow just encouraged me to apply for the position at Suzanne's and that was five years ago um she took a chance on me I had very little experience really um and I found there was so many transferable skills from being an actress um as I'm sure anybody who's who's acted and gone into casting or into agenting because um one of the things that I enjoyed the most um probably is up there with booking a job as an actress back in the day was um making people comfortable enough to get their best performances so that really resonated with me and is, um, yeah, it's, it'll be five years in two weeks that I'll have been at Suzanne's and I'm one of her associates along with Laura Windows, Glenda Mariani, and we're also working with Kate Caldwell, who is casting director from America, who moved here and is now one of our associates as well. Wow. That's Can I ask a question, Dan? Because hmm. um, that, that thing about being as comfortable as they can be to get their best performance. I mean, this, this, is, this is an interesting thing because because lots of actors feel that there's a, a, a feel a lot of pressure coming in to the room and also before the room, and um, sometimes I think they don't hear or see the the your your desire to make us comfortable. Um, in your experience, um, can you talk to that at all? Yeah. It. I mean. <laughs> We, I mean, the reason we do things like this and why I would do a workshop or anything like this is to sort of demystify the process because there was stuff that I didn't know when I was acting. Um, and I, I regularly thought I was barking up the wrong tree. Um, and it happened very early on in at Suzanne's. I was taken to the theatre. It's one of the perks of casting to get taken to the theatre. And um, uh, I was there with an agent and several other casting directors and in walked a very prominent casting director. And she just said, are you Caitlin Joseph? you're on all my lists, what, what are you doing here? And I was like, I needed to know this a year ago because I was like deciding, I had a real identity crisis about being an actor. You always feel like, am I doing the right thing? I didn't even know if you liked me, we've met once. Um, and you don't know that because we have to keep this sort of professional veneer on when we meet you and kind of sort of try and treat everyone as equally as possible. Um, but I do think that one, what, you don't realize is that um, we're, we're desperately trying to get your best performance all the time. And we do not, we never want to scare you. So it's not a trick question when you walk into the room and we say, do you have any questions? And there are, and if possible, we will try and give you time. I mean, there's lots of different techniques for different offices and everybody's different, but in our office, we want to make sure if we've booked you for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, we can use all that time. Um, if you haven't learned the lines, we're going to try and help you. We might send you away to come back, we might get you to self tape. Um, if we say to you, if we give you notes, we want, we will then say, do you, do you understand? You're allowed to say no. There's this thing that we do as actors, which is once you're getting a note to do another take, you suddenly go, uh huh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you've not taken it in. Part of you might just be going, ah. Um, because nerves get the better. We can tell the difference between nerves and not being able to act. And most of the time it's nerves. Now, the more comfortable we can make you, the better we hope you can control your nerves because that's the one thing we can't. In an ideal world, I'd love to sit you down, give you a cup of tea, talk through all the script, talk through all the character's story, get your insight. We don't always have the time, but you've got to understand that if you've been called in, you are meant to be there. We've gone through hundreds, if not thousands of submissions and chosen you to audition because we think you could be right. And it, even if you're not, if it turns out you're not quite right for the role, if you give a good meet where you manage to overcome your own nerves and trip over yourself in, in that respect, 
we'll call you in again um, and keep doing so. We'll remember you. And we have very long memories um, because we need to. Yeah. I'd love to have a cup of tea and some beluga caviar. You know, it's absolutely. <laughs> well, it's fine. Um, yeah. We've got a little kitchen. Perfect. Whip your carbonara, whatever you want. Perfect. Perfect. Um, so, so can I ask you about that though, Caitlin, when you come in, because my, my since doing lots of coaching now and, and, and teaching, I, I find that, that, that there's a tendency for actors to rush. And I know I, you know, I still, I'm still an actor as well. And I know that, you know, you get to the casting and, you know, you, you get in there and you think, I've really got to hurry up because I'm taking up all their time and they've got so many other people to see. Um, so in your experience, again, can you talk a little bit about the difference between when you see actors coming in who are rushing and ones who come in and own the space? Because we hear a lot about people, you know, the, the successful people come in and they, uh, you know, they don't care. They yeah. just... it, it varies. It varies. It, it's, it's a case that, that it's normally the difference between you can see when someone is calm and someone is nervous. One of the biggest things I have to remind an actor to do in the room sometimes is to breathe. It's one of Suzanne's biggest notes. She go, okay, so we've done it. Now breathe. <laughs> you need to breathe. Otherwise you're cutting off oxygen to your brain, which is remembering lines and trying to take in all the notes. Um, so it, it's, it's one of those things where you need to, it, it's a really difficult thing because you'll, you'll crammed for this test like it was an exam, you'll crammed your audition in, and then it's over so quickly, and then it's very hard to let it go, which you have to do as well. You have to be able to let it go at the door and go on and know that if you didn't get the call, somebody else did, and that's good karma in the world. But we can tell the difference. And I would say that the biggest difference, so I find that people relax once they've met us once. And then, uh, but the first time they can be quite nervous. And there is a difference between being relaxed and arrogant because I've had people come in with a swagger and, and kind of like, hmm, and I've been like, all right, calm down. Um, it, it's a case that we're all people, we're all human beings and we're all really excited to be having actors back into the room. We've only just started doing that. And it's a case that we're doing it for kind of callbacks and open calls in particular. And it's partly because the studios that we're working for, some of them uh, because of COVID, um, don't want us doing in meeting, uh, in-person meetings. It's part of their insurance when they first employed us for stuff. They're sort of bit like, well, if you guys go down with COVID, that's because we had you do it in person. So um, a lot of the time it's self-tapes. Uh, but when you're coming in to meet us, yeah, it, you just got to take a breath. It's a bit, it's, a, it's like anything, it's like dating, you know? I've seen your profile online, I've liked it, I've thought, let's meet up, I want to build a relationship. Um, and if you come in, well, let's say this, let's say you, you've looked me up and because I've had people just turn up at the door and it's like, cool, if you would just start dating someone, and they did that, you'd be like, oh, we don't, you don't hire desperate. And I know how it can get to a point where you feel like if it's not this gig, then, then I'm never going to do it. You need to kind of be able to take a beat and go, right, it's okay. I'm okay. I'm meant to be here and, and calm the nerves enough to have a, just a normal chat with us. Because those are the people that normally can own the space because when we ask them to do stuff, they, they do what we ask. Um, and that and then they can register their brain enough to enjoy doing the scene. We want to play with you and enjoy the scene. Um, that's what we want to do. Uh, that's why we want you to know your lines. It's not because it's a lines test. It's because we want you to enjoy an audition. As an actor, most of the time your audition is, the, is it, there are sometimes very few chances to act between whatever zero hour contract you are juggling between the, the waitering or working in a theater, between the, uh, all the other things that you are doing as an actor, between the creating, and then, and then you get an audition through or a self tape. You should enjoy those moments. You should enjoy those opportunities and, and they shouldn't be a chore. I have people who come in and sometimes I wonder why they're acting because they're clearly terrified and they're clearly hating every minute of it. And that makes me sad because I want you to enjoy it because I enjoy auditioning. I enjoy seeing new actors come in and nail it or give me something that I didn't even know I wanted. Um, and 
sometimes it just feels like people are trying to get to the very end of it and that's not the way to approach an audition you're here because you love to act enjoy it enjoy the process and I would say that owning the room is one thing but enjoying an audition that's part of it it makes me think of a word that I use a lot and that word is connection you know because when you call us in and you know you say about you know what have you been doing recently you know the temptation is to talk about uh, you know, you know, the work, but actually it's, it's everything else. It's, you know, it's like, oh, you know, my partner and I had a baby last month or, you know, whatever it is, just this, this is these few minutes that we have. And I'd like to draw everyone's attention to um, what Caitlin wrote on Twitter on her pinned, on a pinned profile, which is the most beautiful words. If you haven't seen it, go to Caitlin's Twitter account because you've pinned this thing and, you know, you talk about in an industry of feast or famine, don't let the famine win. We are allowed to do anything else, be it creative or not. And often as actors, we forget that. Often as actors, we pin our worth on, you know, the jobs or whatever. And actually, if we want to start a family, have a child, buy a house, go on holiday, write a play, anything, just go and do it. Because the industry will still be there when we, you know, when we get back. Absolutely. And I have people coming back now and saying I've not done anything because I went and I, um, I, somebody stopped and resumed being a doctor in the pandemic. I knew somebody else who stopped and had a family, somebody else who decided to go traveling. I was like, amazing. I'd love to hear about that. Because most of the time you've not forgotten how to be an actor and acting will always be there. It will. And it's, it's also a case that for your own, sometimes acting is such a challenge to your own identity because it becomes so wrapped up in it. Um, and there are so many, there are so many things that you don't have in a normal job, normal job, but let's say a desk job or anything else, a job with a company, a job which they'll give you something and you have reasonable goals to hit by the end of the day and you can see at the end what you've done. Sometimes at the end of the day, being an actor, you could look at it on paper and go, I didn't really get much done today. Um, and that's not the case because actually you wake up every day, look in the mirror and you go, I want to be an actor and I am an actor. Yeah. Being an actor, I always say actors are the bravest person in any room because they are constantly having their self-worth challenged, not only internally, like because you beat yourselves up like nobody else does, but also from everybody else, people going, oh, great. It's like you get in a taxi. They're like, oh, you're an actor. Have I seen you in anything? Well, no, you haven't, but I'm still an actor. Um, and you you still get up and find ways to create and, and carry on, um, and especially through the pandemic. Um, I don't think anybody else was ready to see all of their work go just like that whereas actors I think some of us were emotionally ready to be like oh okay um this is a resting period yeah. uh just watching it all crash um down because there is so much uncertainty being an actor um and I just think that yeah actors are the bravest person in any room but also there is so much that you don't let yourself do sometimes when you're an actor and yeah booking holidays having a family doing doing something else for a little bit that's all fine and actually that, that is just you fleshing out your life experience as a human being and you need those to be a good actor, especially for screen. That's interesting, Caitlin. Danny and I before were just having a quick chat about something and we were talking about how people, you know, generally in life, but particularly actors in this casting scenario, give their power away and give so much, say, to you, for example, yep. um, that, that, that we end up not being not being ourselves and it's, it's quite interesting really because we're trying to show ourselves to get cast in stuff because of us but then we don't allow ourselves to show it because we give so much store 